Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of uh, O365A. Um, our topic today is uh, preparing for the mandatory use of TLS 1.2 in Office 365. So uh, this is the uh, <coughs> new message that uh, Microsoft released uh, that as of October 31st, uh, 2018 this year, uh, Microsoft Office 365 will no longer support TLS 1.0 and 1.1. So I'm going to pass it off to Curtis to uh, kick us off. Thanks, Abid. Yeah, this is a, this is a, an important one uh, from a business perspective. TLS, it's somewhat somewhat of a techie term, but it's a, it's a very critical protocol that's used to ne negotiate two sides of a communication um, conduit. So any client and server which connect, they, they negotiate uh, what algorithms and private keys will be used for the secure communication. And they also, um, they also authenticate each other with TLS. And TLS is, uh, it's the predecessor or the successor to a very common um, form of encryption called SSL used on the wire. And both SSL 3.0 and the first versions of TLS uh, 1.0 and 1.1 have some known vulnerabilities. Uh, so Microsoft is making this announcement to make uh, Office 365 communications between the clients and the server services up in the cloud much more secure. So uh, what's what's happening is uh, with supporting 1.2. Um, what it means is any clients connecting to Office 365 will also have to support 1.2 because TLS works like other protocols in that um, if I'm a client, I'm connecting to a service, I say what the highest level of the protocol I support is, and then the, uh, the highest common denominator is selected. So if you have an older client, like the one called out by Microsoft, which is probably the biggest one out in the wild that, that won't be supported is um, Windows 7 uh, clients. They need a knowledge base hotfix installed, which uh, will enable it to support TLS 1.2. And if it doesn't, it won't be able to negotiate that. So uh, Microsoft also has published um, some known clients that are unable to use TLS 1.2. And most of them are some uh, very common web browsers, but much older versions than that are out in the wild now. So there are, the, hopefully the uh, clients that won't connect are, are minimal, but um, businesses are really going to have to make sure that uh, any clients they do have connecting to Office 365 meet that TLS 1.2 uh, minimum benchmark. Great. So I'll pick it up in terms of PCI DSS. So, um if you're not familiar with that, a payment card industry data security standard. So if you're if you're doing anything with credit cards or financial data that you're transferring, you might have an application um, that you're using in-house. For example, you would likely fall under the PCI DSS um, standard that you have to adhere to. So um, really, in a nutshell, what this means is that um, – that certification and uh, the version 3.1 specifically requires that you disable TLS uh, 1.0. So, um, you know, whether, you know, that, that's, that's really what the big push is here to, uh, um, to remediate. So if you're under those standards, you've got PCI DSS certification that you've got to adhere to, then you've got to make sure that you're not using TLS uh, 1.0 and that you, are taking steps to move to, to version one, to TLS 1.2 in your application. So specifically, if you're obviously using uh, stuff in Azure and Microsoft Office 365, then you, you've got to take those steps or you fail to meet your certification. And that, that's obviously going to be uh, problematic for your company. So, um, for, you know, again, from a, from a PCI standard, that's uh, what's really driving this all. So, um, I guess, uh, Obviously, the date was coming very quickly. There was some customers that didn't have that, uh, weren't going to be able to get remediate in time, so the date's been extended uh, to give people some more time to uh, ensure that they're remediated and can can be and can certify uh, against uh, PCI DSS version 3.1. With that, I'll pass it over to Mike. Yeah, so with that, that compliance standard, the PCI DSS, uh, I believe that, that actually 
goes into effect July of this year, July 2018. So Microsoft originally was trying to disable or trying to move their services to 1.2 for for March this year, uh, and then you know they they kind of you know missed the boat. They didn't think that their customers were uh, ready for that 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 aggressive timeline. So yeah, it's been pushed to to the end of October of this year. Uh, so there is going to be a, a point of time that's you know, Microsoft is outside of that that compliance window. You know, that uh, July to October range. Um, I can't. I don't. I don't envision that that date getting pushed further on. Uh, so I think businesses definitely need to address this uh, this TLS change uh, in their organizations by that October. Well before that October range. Uh, just on the side note, it's not just a Microsoft issue. Um, IBM, IBM tried to aggressively disable TLS as well last year. I believe it was August of 2017. Uh, they disabled it. Uh, and then, you know, within days they had to re-enable it because some of their large organizations were not ready for, for that, that change. So, uh, this is definitely a, a major impacting things. Uh, simple things like link phone edition. So you have Microsoft phone system, which we talked about last week, uh, last session. Uh, that's based on Windows C, uh, 6.0. Uh, that doesn't support at this time anything greater than TLS 1.0. Uh, so if we we lock down that that protocol, those phones could become bricks. So uh, thinking of you know device refresh or uh, maybe Microsoft releases a, a firmware that will support that. that that's going to be pretty critical for those. So that'll be something to watch. Uh, on the flip side, uh, Google's Chrome browser, web browser, they're actually going to start marking any websites that don't use SSL certificates as not secure. So you can see that the whole, you know, the industry is moving towards that, you know, get rid of the old encryption uh, protocols that maybe aren't secure, uh, we're a little bit weak, uh, and, and start pushing security harder and harder. Uh, DigiCert announced, I, I don't think it's just DigiCert, but uh, at the end of this month, you can only get certificates that are two years old. Uh, you can't get the three year plus anymore. Uh, so, you know, end of this month, two year certificates are uh, shorter. Uh, what else do we have? We have uh, companies like Let's Encrypt, which is free services where you can leverage certificates. They just hit a huge milestone of 50 million active certificates. Uh, that's a service where uh, based on DNS and stuff, you can get uh, free certificates that auto renew and keep uh, refreshing on a 30 to 90 day basis uh, to secure your services. Awesome. So, yeah, just to uh, sort of extend that uh, discussion, whereas, uh, you know, just sort of collectively what the guys were saying, um, you don't necessarily need to uh, disable 1.0 and 1.1 in your environment as far as locking them down. Uh, you just need to have the ability to enable uh, TLS 1.2 um, within your uh, your browsers and your and your workstations because what will happen is the communication path will um, or the handshake will use the highest version available. Uh, so if you have 1.2 enabled and the far side has 1.2 enabled, they'll use that as far as the handshake is concerned to, um, to start using that, uh, that protocol. And, uh, so I mean, from my perspective, I had a client, um, that is on uh, Windows 7, um, and they're a very secure environment and they disabled the 1.2 1.0 and 1.1 and only wanted to have the 1.2 available uh, for them. So, um, you know, we, we validated that obviously testing on a, on a client machine, but what ended up happening was it was uh, functional with the on-prem, uh, you know, Skype for business server and the desktop client. But what ended up not working was the integration with uh, exchange because the exchange certificates, um, uh, and the Exchange server was still set up utilizing the TLS 1.0 and 1.1. So, you know, you want to be mindful of not um, disabling the protocols um, to be used because it also can break uh, some other integrations within your environment. And so, um, you know, that's just something to, something to you know, make sure that you're looking, uh, you're looking at before doing this type of work. Yeah, that's a good point to be the word integration. So, now that I think about it, this just isn't about clients connecting to the Office 365 services, but if you have any infrastructure 
that's integrated with Office 365 services, you need to make sure that that supports TLS 1.2. And I saw Microsoft called out in uh, that knowledge base article, uh, if you're using ADFS, Active Directory Federation services, that you want to make sure that that infrastructure support, supports both inbound and outbound connections that, that use TLS 1.2. And uh, I see in that knowledge base article, which is really good, by the way, it recaps um, all the good things you need to know. You can find it just by searching for Microsoft preparing for TLS 1.2 in Office 365, but they have a bullet point list there of known clients that are unable to use TLS 1.2, the older uh, web browser versions that I, I spoke of earlier. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely interesting um, when you look at the Microsoft uh, KB article, they don't mention anything with regards to uh, Chrome. They really only name out uh, Android um, 4.3, Firefox 5.0, uh, IE 8 to 10 on Windows 7 versions and earlier, uh, and then IE 10 on Windows Phone 8, uh, and then Safari versions uh, as well. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, Mike, you mentioned something that uh, is not really uh, sort of discussed uh, on that, you know, because I don't know about you guys, but I know a lot of clients have rolled out uh, Chrome for Enterprise so that people uh, like the end users can utilize that. To, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge challenge will come for those orgs that are still running Windows 7, and there okay. there are they all there are still out there for sure. So I think there's a big push to uh, to get them onto a more modern uh, workstation. Yeah, and you have you have kind of the opposite problem too, right? You have those organizations that are very security focused, and they see, hey, 1.2 for Office 365, let's disable everything below that, and then you have you know, all your on-premise services, you know, uh, you have your, your Skype for Business, your Exchange, your SQL, all this stuff might not be patched to a level that uh, mm -hmm. will function without the ability to get down to that 1.0 or 1.1 TLS. Uh, Third-party products, you might have AV systems, uh, like I said, Blink Phone Edition. Uh, so it you can't just... Uh, Flip the switch and expect it to be uh, pre uh, to be smooth without without some effort beforehand. Yeah, for sure. So uh, thanks, guys, uh, for the uh, for the uh, you know for the session and the topics and your uh, information. And uh, I guess uh, stay tuned for uh, the next episode. And uh, thanks for uh, listening in to uh, O365A. Thanks. See you yeah. next time.